Now remember, I moved to Texas 38 years ago with no money and I borrowed 1200 bucks from Beneficial Finance just to get here. Mine is going to be a real racetrack, but it's a motorsports country club. Jeff Stearns, connected through cars. If they're bigwigs, we'll have them on the show. And yes, we'll talk about cars and everything else. Here he is now, Jeff Stearns. So what got us together is you are in the middle of developing or what stage are you in with G2 Motorsports Park? Well, next Monday... They're going to put asphalt down. We'll have 3.1-mile racetrack that's going to be paved. It's 40 feet wide. It was designed by a couple of Formula One track designers, Herman Tilke uh, from Germany and Bob Bernard from Spain. And uh, it's going to be a motorsports country club, but it's built to Formula One specs. It really is unique. And again, I didn't invent the, the idea of putting condos and garages on the uh, racetrack, but uh, when I built my racetrack, I didn't want just a performance track. I wanted a real first-class racetrack. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit, because as you know, I've had other guests with their uh, car, toy, garage, racetrack, whatever, but let's go back a little bit, because you've had a little bit of an interesting string of, let's call it good fortune from a real estate standpoint, they got you to the position of doing this. And I think it surprised you a little too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So fill us in. Well, in the beginning, well, okay. I, uh, I started doing concrete construction of all things down here. I had my MBA from American University and I was a high school math teacher only so I could have summers off to race. But um, I moved to Texas. I got a job with Volvo first and then I moved to Texas and... It was just kind of just barely growing. I actually went broke in the mid, mid-80s, mid and uh, uh, I refused to file bankruptcy, and uh, I rolled my toolbox out and started a little European car repair uh, place. And every time I build a new building for the for the for my, my company, somebody would want to buy it. And I, was, I, I would tell my wife, everything's for sale except my wife and kids. And uh, so... And I would pretty much just, whatever number I spent to build it, I would double it, and almost every single time they would buy it, and I don't know why. So I was able to double my money more than once, and uh, I built my, my company was a Corvette specialty company, because we were racing Corvettes. And every time I'd race Corvettes, we'd have to come up with a new spindle, or a new new tie rod, a new sway bar, whatever. Anything we built for this race for the race car, people started wanting it for their street cars, for their track cars. So we ended up making headers. Borla originally uh, started making headers for us, and um, they told me that I had to sell 500 sets or they were going to take over the, the design. And so I said, go ahead, I'll take it. I'm going to mortgage my house. Whatever it takes, I agree. I'll buy 500 sets, and they could only produce 50 sets a month. That's so why I started putting it on the Corvette form, and I was 50 sets back ordered before they got the first one to me. And uh, so we we sold 600 sets that year, and um, we were making them in house. We were making them in house. We, it took me uh, 18 months to build 70 sets, and they were building me 50 sets a month. And we lowered the price, cut it in half, and just sold hunt, uh, thousands of them. I mean. And so it was a really good design because it was from our race car. So that was like the beginning of LG Motorsports. Um, now, LG Motorsports, it's a company I sold. I built two buildings when I came out here. I bought 75 acres. And I, um, I built LG Motorsports up to be a really, really good company. And I sold it. Now, where is here, Lou? Here is just 20 miles north of Dallas, uh, 20, maybe 25 miles north of Dallas. Toyota's got their brand new headquarters here. We're 28 miles from Toyota's brand new headquarters. We are really close to the Metroplex, which is unusual. And and I had to do a little fighting with the city councils and and get get it moved into the county and out of the city. And that that that's how we were able to get all of our permits. Uh, but it was a battle all by itself. But well, I want to get into that. But I want to actually back up on your real estate fortune, and then I want to still ask you some things about these headers. 
So in the real estate, when you said you took what you had in the building or the, you know, the whole property, et cetera, and double it and you'd get it and you didn't know why, um, do you think that that uh, leaned more towards the location becoming popular or because of the way you were setting up and designing these buildings and someone else wanted to follow the way you had it? Like, what, what was that? I think it was location. We we built one building in a little town called Wiley, and uh, it was it was four miles north of a brand new highway that was going in, and I figured at some point that they're going to connect, and it sure they sure did. Went from a two lane asphalt road to a, a six lane, really beautiful road in front, and so I built it for two hundred and sixty five thousand, and I sold it for a million sixty five. So uh, I went looking for land and. Uh, I found five acres that was owned by Lowe's Lumber, and it was on, it was on the market for I don't know five six years, and they finally took the sign down, and I had my realtor call him and offer him five hundred thousand because that's what I had left over from the other building, and they said no, we'll never take five hundred, but or we never take four hundred. I offered them four hundred, but we will take five hundred. So I bought that. I built the building. I had two point three million in a forty five thousand square foot concrete tilt wall building, a beautiful building. But I used half of it for my company and the other half I rented out and paid my whole mortgage. And for whatever reason, somebody wanted that building in that spot. And so I doubled the number and I made about 2 million bucks. And that's when I bought the land out here. I kept doing these these uh, 1031 exchanges. And, and uh, so I bought 75 acres out here and I built two buildings. So I went to a Corvette event at the at the Corvette Museum, and the guy that I raced with, Mitch Wright, was running the show. And I said, Mitch, how many acres do you have here for this whole racetrack? He said, 150. Well, well as soon as I got back, I, I put an offer on the 75 acres next door to us, and so all of a sudden, within three or four months, I had 150 acres. The second 150 cost me double. Well, that's part of my racetrack now. I ended up buying 33 more acres, which cost me triple, but I was able to accumulate 180 acres. And then I had no money to build the racetrack. So I started out by selling my company and my building. And that was a big score, 6.3 million. I sold the company. Now remember, I moved to Texas 38 years ago with no money. And I borrowed 1,200 bucks from beneficial finance just to get here. And so Texas has been very good to me. I love, te- I love Texas. So I sold that company and bought the rest of the land that I needed. And uh, we started uh, trying to raise the rest of the money. And the only thing we could come up with was an SBA loan. And so the SBA loan was very, it took, it took three years to, to accomplish the SBA loan. But some of that was through the COVID thing. So every, everybody slowed down. I mean, there was no way to get a hold of people because they were government workers. They weren't working. But we eventually got it done and we got it approved 18 months ago in April. But it took us until November to actually get the paperwork. Anyway, long story short, we started construction on this track. We got a $12 million loan. The land was paid for but we got a $12 million loan to start construction. And that started uh, January 26th. We got two of the best contractors in the entire Dallas, in the entire Texas, Oklahoma market. The Sinicola, Mario Sinicola and Sons, they, they're doing the dirt and all the, uh, all the track preparation. And Austin Paving is doing the asphalt. And we have two layers of asphalt. The first layer is regular DOT highway asphalt. The second layer is Formula One. It's a it's a super duper mix. So we're going to have a racetrack that's 40 feet wide, designed by Formula One designers, and it's going to feel unbelievable because it's going to have the right the right asphalt on it. So here I am. I told my wife in two years we'll have a racetrack and we'll be broken, and it looks like we're going to have a racetrack. Beautiful. And I'm looking at the website. I'll make sure to put in the show notes the link to the website and. I mean, my goodness, from Formula One to Nürburgring, and then you've got a weekly drone video. I'm assuming that's for the progress of the project. Drawings of the track, unbelievable. So here's a question. Other guys that I've talked to in this space, um, they've made it more like a club and more, um, well, I don't want to say more safety-minded, but they certainly not rate, like you can't pass another driver. So yours looks like more racing-centric, or am I misunderstanding? Mine is going to be a real racetrack, but it's a motorsports country club. 
and the biggest problem with having a having a hot rod like for example having a hot rod like that you can't drive it the way it was meant to drive on the street because number one there's usually flashing lights behind you it's dangerous you know it's it's you can't drive fast safe and legal on my track you're going to be able to drive fast safe and legal and we're going to have just so we get to know all the police, we're going to have a a, a tactical driving class out here. We're going to get some tap, tactical driving instructors to teach the police how to spin somebody out. I know how to do that. <laughs> I guarantee it. So, yeah, so it's going to be a motorsports country club, but it also is going to include these garage condos that you can buy. And that's your it's your space. You own it. And And you can buy a small, medium or large. You can put your cars in there. We are doing it similar to what other guys have done. We've pre-sold. We have 30, 30 coming in the first, the first phase. And we've got uh, seven of those sold already. I've got some people that I'm talking to again. We'll probably have the 30 sold before we get all the guardrail up. It's going to be a real racetrack. It probably have a top speed of over 150 for most of the real good cars. It's got a bank turn in there. I, I spent a lot of time at Nürburgring in Germany. And so they have a bank turn, a carousel, and we made one turn. It's got 13% banking. It's going to be pretty interesting. The biggest issue was that the asphalt company was worried that they weren't going to be able to, to get their asphalt machine on that banking. That's an, Okay, so that's interesting things you don't think about uh, from behind the scenes. Like, okay, I mean, why couldn't you just make a bank any way you want? Well, I mean, I guess that's one reason is the... Uh, Cement mixer. <laughs> yeah. Not- yeah, these are asphalt, so the asphalt's going to be on an angle. And then they can't put the truck the truck on an angle because all he has to do is, you know, raise his bucket and pour the asphalt into the machine. Well, he can't do that because it's falling down. It's going to miss it. So they have to do it another way, and I'm waiting to see how they do it. But they said they could do it. So, hey, they did Daytona and, uh, you know, all those uh, NASCAR tracks. They can do mine. They'll bring your asphalt with an Osprey chopper or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the asphalt starts next Monday. So this is the, uh, today is the 12th. It'd be the 19th. Asphalt will hit the ground. Well, congratulations on that. Will your members be able to race or will it just be for their own lap times, track times, top speed, etc.? It'll be for their own lap times, track times, but we'll have in-house races. So Radical Race Cars is going to set up a shop here. And they'll sell some Radical race cars, and we'll we'll get the people that own Radicals, and we'll offer them the opportunity they can race each other. We'll have some in-house races. If I had my way, I would get a, a Ferrari Challenge uh, race hooked up for here, or a Porsche Cup race, something that's manufacturer-related uh, that we can have a race here with that. Plus, uh, we're, we're talking to two different manufacturers. If we can get a manufacturer that's willing to give us, you know, 15 or 20 cars, we can have a, a race series based around those cars. Is insurance difficult, Lou? I'm always curious with these motorsports parks. Is Because we're not going to hold real competitive racing. You know, we're not going to allow um, Indy cars here or, or Trans Am or World Challenge. We're not going to have races like that. So as long as we're not doing full competitive racing, it turns into a, a lot less. And I believe that's why it's... Uh, it's designated a performance track, not a racetrack. This has been Jeff Stearns, Connected Through Cars.